Good morning. For those of you who don't know, my name is Maya Karen. I run a fashion blog called Classically Kept. It does feature luxury, contemporary, and how to style and now a natural hair care. So if you were into any of those things, please consider subscribing to my channel. Click the notification bell. That way you will never miss a video. So today I have 21 tips for you of how you can dress better right now. So let's go ahead and get started. Tip number one is going to be invest in a coat. Now, when I say invest in a coat, I'm talking about invest in a coat with the heaviness and the material for where you live, right? A coat is relative to where you live. If you live in Florida, your coat is not going to be as heavy as someone who lives in Maine, right? If you live in, let's say, Arizona, your coat is not going to be as heavy as someone who lives in the Midwest, right? So now that we've gotten that out of the way, invest in a coat. It can be a classic coat, it can be a classic color, it can be a statement coat. But we have all seen the fashion girls, they will throw on like a pair of jeans, they will throw on a white tee, they may have on a boot, they might have on a sneaker, but the moment they throw on that tailored coat, right, their look is instantly elevated. Tip number two, 80% of your closet should reflect your actual life. I did a video and I'll link this down below talking about um, the reason I, I did a video talking about why you have nothing to wear or why you can't find your style. And one of the things that I said in there is that you are living with your fantasy self, right? And I gave the example, if you are a stay at home mom with three kids and they have all types of activities, karate, ballet, the chances of you going out to the club every weekend, the chances of you being on the red carpet every weekend, right? The chances of you, you know, going to a gala or a gala every weekend, you're probably not doing that as a stay-at-home mom of three kids with all these activities, right? Your your closet needs to reflect your life. And in this video, I'm going to say 80%. Leave the other 20% for like the fantasy, the going out, your closet needs to reflect your life. So for instance, if you are someone who works from home, you are probably going to have a little bit more of a casual aesthetic, right? Let's say you have a nine to five and you work Monday through Friday. Your aesthetic is probably going to be more casual than someone who actually has to go into the office, right? And even if you are going into the office, you also have subcategories of that, right? Because going into the office for different people it has it has different environments, right? If you are someone who works for customer service, you might have to be casual, right? If you are someone who, let's say, is an insurance adjuster, you might have to be business casual, right? If you are someone who is like the owner or like the VP of like a law firm or a Fortune 500 company, you are probably going to have to be business all the time, right? You're probably gonna have to have a suit. You're probably gonna have to have a sweater set. You're probably gonna have to have a trench coat. You're probably gonna have to have a pea coat, right? Very classic things, things like that, you know, small pearl earrings, you know, heels under three inches. You're probably gonna have to have like a work bag and things like that, right? Your closet needs to reflect a majority of your life. Tip number three, shoes are not an afterthought. Shoes are a part of your outfit. You guys know me, you guys know that I love statement shoes and I love statement earrings. And this can be easily solved, not necessarily going out and buying new shoes, but just keeping up with the shoes that you have now, right? You see this beautiful woman in an outfit. She looks beautiful from head to ankle. And then when you get down to her shoes, they're scuffed, they're scratched, they have holes on, they have holes in them, they're discolored, they're faded. Or when she's walking, you hear like that tap, tap, tap sound. That means that her taps need to be replaced on her shoes. Shoes are not an afterthought. And as a matter of fact, for me personally, statement earrings or a pair of shoes can actually complete an outfit. Tip number four. Iron your clothes. I know that that's something it's like, well, duh, but you'd be surprised the amount of people that I see, you know, just out and about. And I'm not talking about linen. And as a matter of fact, it's fall. So we should not be wearing that much linen that is relative to where you live. But iron your clothes. It would amaze. It amazes me how sometimes people, and again, it's the exact same thing. You see this woman or a man in a beautiful outfit or in a handsome outfit, and then you take a little closer look and it's like, but why are your pants wrinkled? Why is your shirt wrinkled? You know, why is your collar, you know, throwing up gang signs or whatever? Just make sure that you're ironing your clothes, right? And you know, you can iron your clothes, you can steam your clothes. There's so much technology out here now. 
I think it's either Tide or Downy. They even have like the wrinkle, the wrinkle spray. You can throw it in your dryer before you leave. I know our dryer has the wrinkle, the anti-wrinkle press or whatever. Just make sure you're ironing your clothes. The next tip, and I actually said this in my video of what elegant women do not wear or do, but the next tip is for my ladies. Ladies, let's wear the proper undergarments. You should, especially in 2023, getting ready to go into 2024, we should not have panty lines. I don't care if you're wearing a skirt. I don't care if you're wearing leggings, especially with leggings. I don't care if you're wearing high-waisted trousers. I don't care if you're wearing a dress. In this day and age, we should have on the proper underwear. No panty lines. The next tip, which I know a lot of, I wish I know this happens to a lot of people, sales. Just because something is on sale does not mean you should buy it, right? Now, there is a caveat to that because I have bought a lot of things on sale, but it is something that I need. It can be a staple in my closet or it is something that I absolutely love and I have been stalking. You guys remember in my sweater dress collection video, I talked about that Ula Johnson sweater dress. It's like cream with like all of this, like with all of the balls and all of like the cable knit going on, right? I would probably say that I stopped that, I would say for a good six months, which clearly means I loved it, right? I had my vision for how I was going to wear it, and I thought of at least three ways that I could wear it with things already in my closet, right? I would say I stocked it for about six months, and then it popped up on, I think, my email that it was on sale. I bought that because I really loved it, it went with my closet, and it was my aesthetic. Just because something is on sale does not mean that you need to add to cart and buy it, okay? Be more um, precise and be more intentional with your sale purchases, okay? Do you love it? Have you been thinking about it? Does it fit seamlessly into your closet? Is it your aesthetic? And is it something that you were actually going to wear? Are you excited that it's on sale or are you actually going to be able to wear it with things that are already in your closet? The next tip is don't get hung up on sizing. Don't be afraid to go up. Yes, I am very much a petite, skinny woman, but this is advice for everybody. Don't so much get hung up on size. Even if you are someone who is in the process of reinventing yourself, maybe losing weight, do not get hang up. Do not get hung up on the size. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to go up a size. And the reason why I'm saying that, and I have said this in a video before, when you are going to these stores like Banana Republic, J. Crew, H and M, Zara, Dillard's, and things like that, for most people, the clothing that you are buying is made for the masses. I've said it before, and I will say it again. There is nothing wrong with your body. Your body is beautiful just the way it is. But when clothing is being made for the masses, even within that size, like a zero or two or a four, even within that size two, there is a weight range. And it's typically anywhere from, depending on the company, it can typically be anywhere from five to 10 pounds or five to 15 pounds. So someone who wears a two, let's say they weigh 105 pounds, right? It's going to look different, even though it's the same size two on someone who is 115 pounds. Not to mention they might be shorter, they might be taller, somebody might have a little bit more weight in their midsection, somebody might have a little bit more hippage, somebody might be a little bit you know, healthier in the bust, right? When you are buying clothes that are being mass produced, just keep in mind that there is nothing wrong with your body and don't be afraid to size up. I know that it's easier said than done and I know it's really a psychological thing, but what I would say to you is if you are someone who struggles with that, just take both sizes in. Take a two and a four in and you might find that the four actually fits you better. This next one, which I believe I did a video on this, I wanna say when I first started YouTube, but dressing your shape. Knowing your body shape is very, very, very important because it's going to help you understand what looks best on you. And I give this example all the time. I myself, I very much consider myself a triangle. Why is that? Because I have broad shoulders and then I come down like this. My hips do not meet my shoulders. Now, I also do consider myself a rectangle somewhat. I do have definition in my waist. I'm saying that to say, and you guys have heard me say this before, the dress that best fits my body type is a fit and flare. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's fitted on the top and then it flares out right at my waist or my waist or my natural waist, right? It gives me the illusion of more volume on the bottom. 
it gives me the illusion of the actual hippage that is not there, right? It's the same thing for a pear shape, apple shape, and for a Coke bottle. You need to learn how to dress your body. And I know this is going to ruffle some feathers, but every trend and every piece of clothing is not made for every single person, okay? The next one is plan your outfits ahead of time for special occasions. And this is something that I, had that I started doing in high school, especially when it came to prom, and I have kind of followed this idea throughout. As you guys have heard me say before, I'm short and I'm skinny. I don't really, I do have my specific stores that I know that I can walk into and something is going to fit. It might take a little tailoring. I know those stores. But for special occasions, I'm not going to shop at a J. Crew or Banana Republic, right? I might have to go to like a Solace London. I might have to go to like an actual company brand that is focused on formal wear or special occasion wear. Me being, me being skinny and, and have had that struggle before, I know that let's say I have somewhere to go in May. Truth be told, I might actually start looking for that in February or April because I need to find what I actually love, what I actually like, and then I'm taking it to the tailor that way early. That way there is no confusion or there is like no um, anxiousness or there's no nervousness of whether or not it's going to fit, right? I will give you a prime example. David and I got engaged on December 25th of 2018. January, I had already made my appointment for my wedding dress. Got my wedding dress and I wanna say it took about all in all about three months for her to do the alterations. Now I am a COVID bride, so we did have three dates. But the point of the matter is, is that I planned prior to, okay? So when it comes to special occasions, just make sure you're leaving yourself a little bit of wiggle room. Which kind of brings me to my next point. Try on your outfits before it's time to wear them, before it's time to go out. You guys remember that short that I did, and I will link it down below, about my vision with the Bottega Veneta circle skirt and the J. Crew uh, metallic sheer top. For me personally, it was not what I visualized, so I have since returned both of those tops. I have kept the earrings, and I'm now on the hunt for the perfect top for that occasion, right? But just really in everyday life. Sometimes when you get clothing or when you see it on somebody and then you wait to wear it or then you wait for the vision to come true, sometimes when you put it on, it doesn't look how you want it to look. And I don't know about you, but I'm very much someone because I am buying pieces that I love. I need to wear that piece within that week, right? So let's say I go shopping on Monday and it gets and I buy it. Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm already looking for an opportunity to wear that, right? Sometimes our visions do not come to fruition, okay? So just try it on before it's actually time for you to wear it or before it's time for you to leave the house. The next tip is a closet purge. Make sure that you are keeping your closet up to date with your style and your aesthetic. I just did a closet purge. I will link it down below. If it doesn't fit, if it doesn't serve you, if you haven't reached for it for a while or for two seasons, it's time to get rid of it. Purge your closet. The next tip is that accessories matter. Whether it's a scarf, whether it's a necklace, whether it's a ring, whether it's a belt, you'd be very surprised, and I know you've seen these videos before, but you'd be very surprised. As a matter of fact, I will give you an example. If you remember the Aritzia haul that I did where I had on the gray turtleneck and I had on like the gray column maxi skirt, me putting on a black belt with that will instantly up chic that outfit, right? Accessories matter, whether it's a hat, whether it's a scarf, think about your accessories. And as a matter of fact, accessories can change the look of an outfit as well. The next tip, which I have really never believed this, I understand where people, I understand where it's coming from because it's such a common color, but for me personally, black is not the answer to everything. And I kind of explained this in my monochrome um, lookbook. I will link that down below. Explaining that black does not go with everything. And I will give you the perfect example. I believe one of the examples that I gave in that video was like an all pink or like an all bright pink or like an all magenta look. For me personally, because of how deep and how rich and how bright magenta is, a black shoe is not going to look right. It's too much of a stark contrast for it to look right, for it to look or to make the or to make the actual outfit look seamless. What I said in that video was go for your nude. I'm not talking about tan or beige. I'm talking about your nude. You guys know the story about how my nude Christian Louboutin got stuck. 
I am on the hunt for a new pair. But to me personally, with an all magenta look or an all, you know, cerulean blue look or like an all seafoam green look, my nude is going to look better, right? Black is not the answer to everything. The next rule, buying clothes that you are in love with. And that is very much where I am right now. If I do not absolutely love something, I am not buying it in store and I'm not putting it in my cart for it to arrive at my house, right? When we are talking about our wardrobes and we were talking about our style, when we were talking about our aesthetic, I want you to start thinking about your closet as prime real estate, right? Coveted real estate. If you do not love something, if you are not gravitating towards something, if you are pulling something out and then something else catches your eye and you are consistently putting it back, that means that either number one, you don't know what to do with it, you don't know how to style it, or you truly have outgrown that piece, okay? We are only purchasing pieces that we love. And that can be basic or statement or trendy. The next tip is the three wear rule. And I'm pretty sure you have heard of this or you are aware of it. But simply put, let's say you and your friend are going on a shopping spree and you guys are just hanging out and having fun and you come across the most beautiful top. You take it to the dressing room, you try it on, you absolutely love it, it's coming home with you. Before you go to the cash register, I want you to think about this top. And just right now, this new top and all of the things in your closet. If you cannot think in your head, I would probably say like within the next couple of minutes, three outfits or three different ways to wear this top, although you love it, I would suggest to you to leave it there. The reason why, if you cannot think of three outfits off the top of your head to wear this with, that means it's not going to fit seamlessly into your closet. You are going to struggle to find something to wear with it. And then what's going to happen? It's going to sit in your closet. It's taking up prime real estate and you have wasted money and you are not going to get your cost per wear, okay? And I know you guys have heard this rule before and I'm pretty sure you've heard from other fashion girls, but let's make sure that our skin proportions are correct, right? And I will give you the perfect example. I have on a turtleneck, right? So I am covered from neck to navel. I could get away with wearing a mini skirt or a skirt that is going to come right above my knees, right? So that means that my mid thigh for the mini skirt would be showing all the way down to my ankles and then all the way down from my knees to my ankle with the skirt that's coming right above my knee right because i have on a mini skirt on the bottom i wouldn't necessarily wear something that's showing a whole bunch of clavicle like a whole bunch of cleavage on top let's say for instance you have on a pair of high-waisted very wide leg pants right on the top you can show a little bit of clavicle you can have an off the shoulder moment you can have a couple of cutouts or you can even wear a spaghetti strap and then of course if you get cool you can put over you can put a cardigan over it okay but let's just make sure that we are correct in our skin proportions and the reason why is that it gives the look balance and it also balances out your body proportions the next tip, we are in the age of fast fashion. There are some companies that have 52 seasons, right? We used to have fall, winter, spring, summer. Now you have companies that are putting out clothes every week and every day. Your entire closet should not be a trend, right? Your style aesthetic should not be a trend because you are always going to be spending money. Your closet is always going to be revolving. You should have some classic pieces in your closet that fit your aesthetic, but your entire closet should not be a trend. Next is do consider the care of a garment before buying it. And I have been guilty of this before. I'm a lot better with it now just simply because of where I am. There are certain things that I will not buy because they will always require an iron. I disdain ironing. I will do it if the piece is already in my closet, but if I know that something is just always, aside from linen, if I know that something is just always going to be wrinkled, more than likely I'm not going to buy it. And this is more so for your silks and your cashmere and for your dry clean only. Let's say there is a piece in the store that you absolutely love, but then you look at the tag and it says, you know, 100% silk, it needs to be dry cleaned. Are you going to take the time to have it dry cleaned? And are you going to spend the extra money to have it dry cleaned? Just think about the care of a garment before you buy. My second to last tip, and this one is something that I have always abided by. Make sure the clothing in your closet or the clothing that you are wearing is comfortable. 
Nothing bothers me more than when I am out and about and I am having to tug, pull down, pull up, fidget, mess with my clothing. Just doing that for me personally makes me uncomfortable in what it is that I'm wearing and it makes me think that people are staring at me because I am always fixing and altering my clothes, right? Just make sure that whatever you are wearing is comfortable for you. And my last tip, which I'm not going to harp, but you guys know that I live by this. But if you have not watched any of my videos, you don't know. But my last tip is tailoring. Tailoring, tailoring, tailoring. I will link some of those videos down below. Tailoring can transform your closet. It can transform your aesthetic, your outfit, your wardrobe. It, tra it just, it transforms. And like I said, I will link the videos down below, but tailoring to me is so, 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 so important. There is not a garment in my closet that I have not set aside for a budget should I receive it and it's a little too big, okay? Tailoring, tailoring, tailoring. It can transform your wardrobe, okay? So those are all the tips that I have for you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Let me know if you follow any of these rules. I just wanna remind you here on YouTube, I do upload videos every Wednesday and Sunday and right here or right here, I'll put my Instagram handle. Thank you so much for hanging out with you guys. Bye. We always have it coming.